this is the lecture notes for chapter 9, section 2. And in section 2, we look at the different type of environments, the different type of magma, and the different types of volcanoes, and uh, the characteristics of the different types of eruptions that are caused by the different type of magma. The amount of silica in magma, and uh, Joe Schantz, if silica, that's quartz affects its vis viscosity. And viscos viscosity, once again, if you've forgotten that term, means how sticky something is, how resistant to flow it is. Basaltic magma, and just a little refresher, that's the iron rich or the darker minerals. That magma has the least amount of silica, so it flows easily. This little graphic here is uh, will become very important when we watch the video uh, Dante's Peak because after you watch that video in about two pages you're going to have to at least try and tell me uh, what were some of the anomalies or what wasn't quite right with the video in regards to where that volcano was supposedly occurred and I'll tell you that it's uh, uh, apparently one of them in the Cascade Range off the coast of Washington but uh, some things they got right some things they threw in a little bit of movie magic and stretched uh, maybe the truth or the uh, geologic facts a little bit. So the characteristics we're going to look at, first off with the basaltic magma, again this is the darker minerals, the silica content is the least, the gas content is the least, they're least viscous which means they're not sticky, they're rarely explosive, they have high melting points, and where do they occur? Along rifts, uh, that'd be like the mid-ocean ridges where you have divergent plate boundaries, and along oceanic hotspots. Hot spots. A classic example are the Hawaiian Islands. Um, the volcanoes on Hawaii tend to flow. You've probably seen footage, and I'll include that at the end of this lecture, where that lava just flows out of a crack or a rift uh, towards, you know, flows with gravity towards the sea. You will see some spitting occur here, but typically these volcanoes aren't very explosive and they just flow uh, via gravity to the ocean. The second class we're going to look at, an andesitic magma. The silica content is a little higher gas contents a little higher, they're a little more sticky, um, sometimes explosive. Mount St. Helen is an example, uh, blew half the mountain off in 1980. The melting temperature of the rock or the magma is in the middle level and typically these type of volcanoes occur along subduction boundaries. Again, basaltic, basaltic magma, tends to be the flowers and acidic and when we look at rhyolite they tend to be the blowers. Last one we're going to look at rhyolite has the most silica content, most gas content. They're the stickiest um, material and they're usually explosive. The temperature at which the rock melts is the lowest and these occur at continental hotspots. Yellowstone is a classic example. If Yellowstone ever decides to go, um, we're fortunate in that it has some venting, but it, if, if it ever decides to go, uh, Wisconsin probably won't exist because um, the fallout from that explosion will uh, cover Wisconsin and probably go all the way to the west coast. Gases escape easily from basaltic magma. They generate relatively quiet eruptions. And if you think of something like, um, oh, maybe like you know, water boiling on a stove, that that it's the gas is allowed to escape. And then if you have something like uh, pudding or something thicker than that, that if you heat it too fast, it's going to blow. That is more of the um, andesitic type environment. Hardened basaltic lava flows on land uh, and it's characterized as, and these are a couple Hawaiian terms that we have. We have uh, pohoihoi and a'a. 
Pohoihoi tends to be, and we'll look at it when you read section two, Pohoihoi tends to be the ropier um, looking lava, and Aa is the blockier, the more uh, angular, the sharper uh, lava. If it cools underwater, it's characterized as pillow lava. And if you remember from the last chapter, I told you that uh, pillow lavas exist. Uh, one outcrop is um, in between Crandon and Rhinelander in a little town of Monaco, the intersection of Highway 8 and 45. There's an outcrop of this pillow lava, and it's, it's a, a geologic feature. You often see a lot of uh, geolo geology students stop there with their professors to uh, examine it because it's indication that at one time northern Wisconsin, um, across northern Wisconsin, were these little island arcs, and they spit up the sulfide minerals um, that are rich in lead, zinc, silver, copper, and gold. Gases tend to be trapped in andesitic and rhyolitic magmas. They're the ones with the more silica, and they lead to explosive eruptions. Pyroclastic material, the material that's erupted from a volcanic eruption, as solid fragments as well as lava are commonly ejected from explosive eruptions. And uh, when we see the video, you'll see um, evidence of this um, in, in the video. And Mount St. Helens is a classic example where it blew, you know, half the side of the mountain off the face because that gas was trapped. Um, the, the rock was thick and sticky, and it just blew the side of the mountain apart. The vocab for Section 2, viscosity, is the substance's resistance to flow. Lava is magma that reaches the Earth's surface. Magma that doesn't reach the Earth's surface, of course, is magma. Pahoehoe, again, a Hawaiian term. It's a solidified basaltic lava flow on land that has formed with uh, smooth rope-like surfaces. Ah, uh -uh, on the other hand, is a solidified basaltic lava flow on land that has formed with rough, jagged surfaces. Um, if you've ever seen anybody attempt to walk across the uh, lava fields in Hawaii, you want to look for the pahoehoe. The ah, uh -uh will probably cut your, cut through your shoes, or cut your feet. Pillow lava again is lava that cools underwater, taking on a distinctive pillow-like shape as it hardens. And the outcrops near Monaco, if you ever get a chance to see them, um, they, they're kind of like lumpy and they, they actually look like pillows. Pyro pyroclastic material is a solid rock fragments that are ejected during a volcanic eruption. And you'll see a pretty good example of some pyroclastic material at the very beginning of the video, Dante's Peak. And then, of course, once the... Uh, Oh, I don't want to give it away, but once the volcano blows, you'll also see some more evidence of pyroclastic material. And pyroclastic flow, then, is a dense superheated cloud of gas and material that moves rapidly downhill from an erupting volcano. Again, we'll see some evidence of that in the uh, Dante's Peak video. And this concludes the lecture notes for Section 2.